Hey, what's up, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. And tonight I'm going to be talking about this story that I posted to my Instagram about this young woman who basically spoke out after a traumatic event on her end. And social media has been debating as to whether she brought this upon herself or is she a victim of a very traumatic event that should have never happened. Now, I'm going to read to you guys the goings-ons that's goings-ons, but to see the true graphic photos, you're going to have to go to my IG and see the damage that was done when it was immediately done to her. I'm going to skip over the graphic photos, and then I'm going to go into reading what happened and why now the guy that you see to the right is her baby daddy and he is at the center of this situation where it was alleged that he just sat idly by and watched this happen to her now let me pull up let me bypass the graphic photos first and then let me go into reading how who what where and why now, she posted to her in, to her Facebook and she said the following. On Saturday, July 29th at approximately 5 p.m., I went to my baby father, Tavante Murray's house or his apartment to have a conversation with him because I saw some girl posted up in his bed and I was just there on July 24th. So I was a bit confused as to what was going on. So basically, so far, we already got a Tavante. And I mean, not to age shame, but girl, your alarm bell should have already been going off. But anyways, um, so she was there on the 29th and I mean, she was there on the 24th and then she sees a girl there on the 29th posted up in his bed and she decided to basically go confront him about it so she takes her pregnant behind to his apartment and she opens up the door because she says that the door was not locked so she invited herself in to his apartment so it says when i arrived at the apartment the door was open so i went inside and went straight to his bedroom where i saw kavina gordon the girl that was in his bed her best friend abigail and his brother jaleel murray i stepped past all of them went straight to tavante i tapped him on his leg and asked what the he double hockey sticks is going on he brushed me off when I was leaving his bedroom. Kavina Gordon, she basically um, hit her on the leg, to which the pregnant girl says once she got hit on the leg, she pepper sprayed her and Tavante Murray. Jalil, which is the brother, and Abigail ran out the room and started beating on her. She says her baby daddy, Tavante, stood there and watched all three of them attack her. Abigail hit her in the head with an alcohol bottle while her baby daddy's brother and Kavina Gordon hit her in the face and kicked her in the stomach. At this point, she says she couldn't see. Her head was down. Only thing she felt was something burning her. I thought it was pepper spray, so I wasn't, um, hold on, wait. She said, I felt something burning. I thought it was pepper spray, so I wasn't too worried. Abigail and Jalil then said, that baby have to die today. While Tavante Murray stood there and watched everything. Jalil, which is the brother, took me outside and started hitting and punching me in the face. Jalil then proceeded to pick up a rock and hit me in the head with it. And Tavante's friend heard me saying, Jalil, stop. I didn't do anything to you. He ran towards me and Jalil said, bro, stop hitting her. You can go to jail. Jalil then responded and said, I don't care. The neighbors saw the slice on my stomach and said, oh, my God, you have to go to the hospital. I then looked down on my stomach and saw the slice. I started to cry immediately, wondering if my daughter was OK. Tavante's friend then asked if he could take me to the hospital. And I said, no, you are a part of this and you planned uh, this with them. He said, no, Octavia, I didn't even know 
Tavante had another girl here. I said, okay, take me to the hospital because I'm concerned about the baby. When I arrived to the hospital, I was immediately rushed into surgery room where the doctor started taking my clothes off and checking to see if my daughter was still alive. Thank God she was and still is. My little princess is a warrior. I was being monitored for several hours to make sure my daughter is okay. The police came into the room and started reading me my rights. I was a bit confused to why they were reading me my rights if I'm the victim. The officer took my phone and said that I'm in police custody. I asked why he said I'm being arrested for pepper spraying my baby father, Tavante. I said, yes, I did pepper spray him after I was attacked by Kavina Gordon, the girl that was in his bed. I started explaining to the officer what happened and he took pictures of my face and my stomach. He had no idea I was hurt. He began to write a report on his way out. He said, I'm going straight to the station to issue out some warrants. I said, okay, thank you. Later that night when I was discharged from the hospital, I came home and took a shower and laid on my bed thinking that they were all being arrested. I went on social media and saw all four of them at a party. At that point, I started to cry. She said, cause like, what? Ain't no way they just did all this and had the nerve to go out partying and not being arrested or anything. I had a mental breakdown. I was crying my eyes out in pain while they were out partying and enjoying life after they almost took me and my child's life. I stayed up all night thinking about where did I go wrong? In the morning, I watched Abigail's Instagram story and saw a video of Tavante, my baby father, Kavina, the girl that was in his bed, and Abigail, Jamil, Jalil's uh, girlfriend, all in the pool laughing as if nothing is wrong. Fast forward to Monday morning today. Um... I have court. When I went to court, they told me that there's a protective order and Tavante Mori is the protective person. I was like, what? And I started to cry. I asked the judge if I can tell her something. And she said, yes, but don't tell me anything ca that can be used against you. And I told her what happened and she was shocked. And she said there was no police report of that. I immediately started to break down crying. She said I should call and follow up on my case after I dismissed. When I got home, I called the police station to ask what's the update on my case that took place on Saturday, July 29th. He said, I'm sorry, ma'am. There's uh, no police report of that. I got so mad and hanged up the phone and started crying. At the moment, I knew I was on my own because they all lied and said they didn't do anything to me. So I had to take it to social media because I deserve justice. The world needs to know what happened and took place on Saturday, July 29th. So she posted that up with the photos of the girlfriend of the brother, who is Abigail, and Kavina, the girl who was in her baby daddy's bed, along with the photo of the brother and an Instagram screenshot of the brother's girlfriend who said that she was the untouchable, along with a photo of her baby daddy, Tavante, saying that um, these are all of the people involved. Now, as it pertains to social media, there was people who felt for her and felt like this should have never happened to her. And then there was people who felt like she was responsible for going over there and she brought this on herself. So there was um, two sides to the story of what people felt. And so I'm going to show you guys some of the comments that was left under my Instagram post. Now, one of the comments reads from Kodak Boy and it says the following. And this was after there was several comments blaming her as to putting herself in the situation. Um, Kodak says this entire comment section is weird AF. Not once has anyone held the baby daddy accountable for anything. Mind you, he just stood there watching allegedly with no concern that his unborn child's life may be in jeopardy. But all y'all can focus on is why she went over there. That's the obvious. She's pregnant and full of emotions. 
something some people in this comment section seem to de be desensitized from. OK, so there was a comment that was quite the contrary from that one that felt like she was responsible for this happening. The next commenter says she had no business taking her blankety blank over there. Point blank. Now, I don't have to explain to those that already know they shouldn't have cut her belly, but she knew who was all there. Um, so what was there to talk about? He just posted a picture of him and the chick laid up in the bed. They didn't care what was what she was going to say to him. So why was you doing that? And she knew he ain't ish, but she's young and she still unfortunately hasn't learned her lesson. And now she's bringing an innocent baby into the world. It's a thousand times more where she, where she comes from. OK, so another person combated that narrative and said, these comments make me sick. So because she walked in means she deserved it. Shaking my head. Now, let it be one of y'all family members shaking my head. First off, let the owner of the home deal with it. They jumped a pregnant woman. TF. OK, and another person says she had no business going there. She really put her and her baby in harm's way. I only had to read the first few sentences to realize what happened here. She should have been home and taught better and smart enough to know she was dealing with trash from the start. So trash behavior is what it will be. Too young and too unaware. Getting pregnant by losers is not a good move. I really wish young ladies the best and I pray they follow their dreams instead of these dead when relationships. OK, and the comment section goes on and on and on. I had nearly almost 500 comments under this post of different people's reactions and feelings and thoughts about it. If you guys are not following me on my Instagram, definitely make sure to go on over there and you can read through what everybody had to say about it. But before you head over to my Instagram, I want to know what you think about it. The breakdown simply is this. She saw her boy, her um baby daddy online with another woman days after she had been there. She got in her feelings. She felt some type of way that, you know, just days before she was there and she decided to go over to his house and confront him while she was on her way there. She knew that another woman was there and she knew that there would kind of probably be some type of friction. So she decided to proceed with her mace and go on about her way to discuss how she felt about it, to which they attacked her and sliced her stomach. I want to know what you guys think about it, because like I said, there's people who feel like no matter what, she's pregnant. They should have never took it that far. And quite the opposite, that felt like she kind of put this on herself. Let me know what you guys think down below and let's talk about it in the content in the comments. And have you dated somebody by the name of Tavante? Have you had good experience with men named Tavante? I want to hear your stories, comments, concerns down below. And what are you what advice do you have to young mothers? I also want to hear what advice you have, because oftentimes I've been seeing, especially with certain celebrities that keep being in the blogs who pregnant by Dusty's. People seem to feel like being pregnant by someone is an excuse to accept disrespect. Were you goofy when you were pregnant or do you have words of encouragement to women who are in this situation? I want to hear from you guys below. Let's talk about it in the comments. I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, and if you want to see this uh, full comment post videos and things that are associated with it, Go to my Instagram, Neek at night underscore.